So the big Barney truck's back. It is having the same issues uh, starting that it was having before. And uh, I've got my voltmeter out here and I've been just testing. Uh, you can see I had it up here. What I was doing was I was testing uh, if we have power from the key ignition turning this thing on when I hit the key, and we do. Um, the way this thing works is this controller, there's a module down here underneath that. That controller, um, you put power to it, it has a separate ground for the controller for the actual um, circuit board itself or whatever they use. And then the module underneath it monitors the amperage draw, what's going across, how much it's pulling. Um, and then once it reaches its maximum ampacity, meaning all the glow plugs are good and hot, well then it, it opens a circuit and it does that through the ground side. So the ignition supplies the power side to this and the, the module controls the ground side. Pretty simple. The only problem is we can't keep one of these from melting down. So this thing's doing the same thing again when you first turn the key on and uh, it clicks and clicks and clicks and clicks and clicks and the glow plugs never actually heat up. So rather than play this dumb game anymore, we're just gonna eliminate the controller. We're just gonna put in a push button in the truck. We're gonna use this solenoid right here and uh, we're just gonna rewire and eliminate that module. We're gonna leave the module there for our mounting because that's how it's secured, but we're going to put our glow plugs on the load side and we're just going to run ignition power to it. We're going to run a ground wire to a push button inside and uh, our battery line coming in here. Now, we, we need something for the lights inside and I believe that's probably this one right here, this blue one, I think that's a light. So we'll probably cut that loose and put it on our load side so that uh, the light will be on while you're pushing the button so you know that it's actually turning on but we're going to eliminate this crap because uh, i don't have time to fix stuff once i certainly don't have time to do it twice based on a bad product um, i can't believe that my that my uh, glow plugs are bad but we're going to pull them off because they're they're each run off of a wire back in here a left and a right off of here so we're gonna disconnect this and we're gonna do an ohms test to ground and see what we got if we if we have a shorted a shorted uh, glow plug yeah it could be our problem but I don't think it is I think it's just a faulty controller because the first one I put on this caught on fire like literally I put it on turn the key on the truck was running I come back and there's smoke rolling from it they exchanged it for me I just fear we have the same problem again, so we're just going to eliminate it, you know. This truck doesn't get used enough either. Like, he's he's driven this truck, you know, 10, 12, 20 times, whatever. Not enough for that to go bad, for sure, in that little amount of time. So let's get us a, a temporary button set up, because we're going to come out in the morning see if that's it. Now, I believe he's telling me there's another problem, that it runs out of fuel. Like, like there's a... There's a uh, uh, leak somewhere where it's losing prime. So this fuel system is a suction mechanical pump it has a tank right over here So this hard plastic line right here comes from the tank goes into this pre filter the first filter and It gets sucked through here through this line and this line goes to the pump So the pumps doing what doing the actual suction of the fuel and pulling it to this point point. After that pump, now we have pressure. So now it's pushing it. So the pushing is gonna come up this line here and head up to this pump, this uh, secondary filter. So it comes in the secondary filter as pressure. So um, it's, it's much easier to find leaks on pressure side than there is on the suction side because the, the pump will suck air long before it sucks fuel if it's able if there's a leak somewhere or possibility so the fuel gets pushed across here into here and the fuel pressure runs into our injection pump here the injection pump turns and it creates high pressure and sends it out to each line all eight injectors in time just like a distributor and when it sends that pressure out 
um, you know, that, that system has so much pressure on one side, and then this is linked to the return side. Any pressure not needed and utilized goes back to the tank by the return line. Back in here somewhere. I can't see it, so I can't tell you. But somewhere in there, there's a leak, and that leak is letting air in the system. And anytime you let air in a fuel system, it lets it very easy for it to drain back to the tank. And he says that's what's happening. He thinks that's what's happening. So when I went to go start this, of course, he cranked it over like three or four revol uh, revolutions and the, it started slowing down. Like the batteries are weak. It needs batteries. I mean, it could use the proper belt on the alternator. I mean, it's tight, but good lord. Yeah, that thing's been slipping. Look how shiny it is. But anyways, uh, the batteries are weak. Maybe they're just not fully charged. But uh, if I put my jump box on it and cranked it over, he gave it a snort of the good stuff, and it fired right off. But when it did, it ran like there was air in the fuel, you know, loping and chugging and carrying on. So we do have to find that. But uh, yeah, look at that. There's O-rings underneath here, and it's not uncommon for them O-rings to not leak fuel, but leak air. So the, the best thing to do is we take all these lines off, replace all this, and replace all... Yeah, look at that mess. I wonder if we're leaking in there somewhere. Yeah. I wonder if there's been a mouse chewing in there, chipmunk or something, because that's soaking wet. Mm. Anyways, we have to find where where it's letting the air in the system so let's get our let's do the the temporary push button first we'll see if that takes care of the glow plugs we're going to own that out too and then we'll then we'll deal with the fuel all right it's the next morning it's probably oh in the 30s last night it's probably low 30s right now enough you can still see your breath so we're going to bypass the glow plug controller and just have these turned on for about 10 seconds so to look at that clock once we're ready one two three four six seven eight nine ten okay crank it Go ahead. Now we're out of fuel. All right. All right, so now it's lost its fuel prime. So go ahead and crank it again. Go ahead. That's too slow. Them batteries are not strong enough for this. That could be part of his issue too. We'll let the batteries recover a second. We'll do the glow plugs again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, this thing needs batteries. That's not going to work. Well, starting fluid is what it took to get it going. So it's pretty cold out. We know what the problem with the glow plugs is. So let's go ahead and take it inside. At least it'll be a little bit warmer for me to work on. Oh, I have parking brakes staying on now. The switch is a little buggered up. I don't want to warm it up too much. But I definitely want it inside because I'm a pansy and it's cold. And we're in. thing about uh, air intrusion is typically once you get it running it's good for a while until that fuel can drain back wherever it's leaking from so it'll, it'll fire up good until until that happens again All right, let's get the door closed down and it needs batteries I charge them batteries up and it wouldn't crank for crap this morning 68 and a half to the top so 
This is the definition of an absolutely useless pickup truck to me. Uh, this might be good for somebody's ego, but it doesn't do anything for work. And that would be why he's borrowing one of my trucks right now. Because you can't put nothing in here. Because uh, you can see where the bed is. The floor of the bed's clear up here near this marker. Like that body mold right there. Everything's way too high. Anyways, maybe we'll get a flatbed someday. So... The first thing I want to do is I want to get the glow plug situation handled. So you can't, you can fix the effects, but you need to find out the cause. So we put a new module on this not long ago, and now it's not working. But as you can see, this is melted. So that plastic being melted wouldn't stop the functionality of typically the module or the solenoid. Okay, and the way this system works is this is our ground. This is our wait to start light, and we have one wire that comes on here from the ignition. So when you turn ignition power on, you have power to here, which this wire powers up, this red one powers up the module to let it know there's ignition power. The other one, this orange one, all right, so let me back up. So once it turns, it has power, this module is able to ground this side, because we have a, a separate ground in the module. It grounds this side of the terminal, and that's what activates the battery power and connects the battery to the glow plugs. Now it uses this wire and this wire here to sense the load that's on here, the, res the resistance, the amount of load this, that is actually being drawn apart th apart, uh, across this so it knows how, what state the, inject, uh, the, the glow plugs are in. So as they heat up, resistance increases. So if the resistance increases, then it can monitor this, and then it takes away the ground here, shuts this off. And every time you hit the key, it's going to measure this and see if it needs to turn those on or not. If the glow plugs are still warm, it doesn't need to turn on. The problem with what we have right now is we, we're not sure if this is cause or effect. When I took this apart, you can see this is all melted. So we don't know. Okay, so this could melt for two different reasons. One could be that the load on this is far too great and this plastic can't take it. The other could be this could be an inferior plastic that's not able to handle the heat that is created by this, this load right here. The load being the glow plugs because they connect here. So the plastic itself wouldn't really stop the function except for this. When the plastic melts in here and it allows this to sink, we no longer have a tight bolt. And you can see right there, you can see that arcing right there. So what that is, is we have make and break. Okay, so every time that the, the controller tries to activate this solenoid and put a load through here, the load, when you get a load, a big load, if you have a loose connection, it can sometimes break. So what's happening was this was loose because this sunk and it's letting it make and break. So it's kind of a faulty design to have something that gets hot uh, be dependent on this plastic. So what we're going to do for testing is we're going to trim all this out, get this out of this plastic. I don't like that. That could catch fire. So what we're going to do is remove it from here and we're going to change the way this is bolted. So let me get this done up a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. I should say I was going to just eliminate the module and just put a push button, a ground controlled push button or a positive controlled push button, whichever way you wanted. Give the solenoid a ground and a momentary positive or backwards, whichever way, so that you would just push the button, hold it for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, let it up and it starts fine. Uh, the problem with that is you're relying on somebody to be able to count to 10. And you have to rely on somebody to realize that just because it didn't start, you just don't you don't just keep pushing that button because you'll just ruin everything and cook everything. Cook the wires, cook the whole entire circuit by overloading it. Um, especially if there's a different problem is why it's not starting. That's why this is a safeguard. That module will stop people from cooking their, their glow plugs. So we're going to try this first. We're going to see if my theory is correct anyways. So here's our sensing wire as well. You can see it's buried down in the plastic. So definitely a faulty plan to begin with. This should have probably been on top. Oh, boy, that is just melted way in there. Let's see if we can 
There we go. There we go. Now, next thing we're going to do is pop this out if we can. We're going to try and remove this bolt. With any repair, we start with a visual inspection. And how are we going to inspect anything when we got a bunch of shells of nuts and debris down in there from the rodents? So we're going to use my wife's Milwaukee vacuum. She just got a new hose for it, too. She's going to be so upset when she finds out that I'm sucking up oily diesel fuel soap crap with her Milwaukee. But I'll just buy her a new one. They come out with a new one. It's uh, more CFM and bigger capacity. It's a 2.5 gallon and uh, another 5 CFM. It's 50 CFM. I think this one's 45 I think that's what it is, 50 to 40, from 45 to 50, something like that. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade hers because she uses it a lot. And, you know, she probably like that. We've seen the shop back ones too, uh, but I think they're kind of big and cumbersome for what she does. This is great for interiors, but if I get this all oily and greasy and I don't tell her and she goes to do an interior, she's going to be awfully upset with me. back up so if it's working correctly the wait and start light should come on we should hear that click but I probably ought to turn that heater off batteries charging again yeah. oh looky there blow her off So I wonder if this system is just not what I think it is. Maybe maybe what it is, is instead of the module getting ignition power and waking up and then applying pow uh, ground to this side, maybe what it's doing is in the normally rest position, we have a ground. Once the ignition power is applied to the solenoid, or yeah, to the module, it knows that, and then it monitors uh, the resistance coming across here and it knows when to open it so instead of this being a normally open it's a normally closed circuit inside the module and when it reaches that point with a high resistance it opens the ground instead of uh, closing it and then opening it maybe it's normally a completed circuit and then the module opens the circuit so that could be because we don't have 13 volts across here. We have 13 volts across ground, then to an outside battery source. The same vehicle, of course, but if it was here, then this thing would overheat because you'd, you'd, you'd kill the batteries because we'd have constant flow across the battery to the glow plugs. So that might just be how the operation works. I don't know. I think for right now, we're gonna go with that and make sure it's not a problem. Um, he doesn't want to replace batteries. He needs to replace batteries, but he don't want to. But now we got to find that the fuel leak. That's the next step. We got to find the fuel leak. So we're going to put our blow gun with a regulator, so we so we're not going to go too much pressure because this is not a pressure vessel. This is a tank meant for holding atmospheric pressure only. So we're going to put air into there and blow it through. It'll pressurize this tank a little bit and force fuel to go. You ready? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do that. No, you're not tight. No. I had it in the... I had it in the hole. That sounds better. Okay, go ahead. Give her beans. I got the regulator set, so it can't do too much. Okay. I need my light. So it'll start forcing fuel up through this line. So we want to look everywhere on this line, all the way through, and look for any signs of a leak. You can't be lazy about this, because you can chase your tail for a long time. Now we'll take the rubber line, going back. It goes into here, so I'm gonna have to take that cover off 
That loom, split loom. Oh, looky there. Looky there. Right there. Getting wet. Smells like diesel fuel. So, there's our first leak. It's getting wet right there. Man, it's, yeah. Yep. All right, we'll keep looking, but that's one of our spots. And we have to the line and you know any place like this where there's a holder you want to play it pay attention to as well because that line could be rubbing through that holder so we'll, one I don't think that's the case there but we'll follow the line up and then we'll we'll definitely tighten up these either a rubber fitting under here yeah. and then we'll just go over the whole entire system looking for anywhere it's a damp and again, we're going to look closer to what I'm showing you, but just to give you an idea of what all we're looking for. You know, you have return lines, you have fittings right here. This is this is not foolproof. This isn't like, if, you know, it'll find every little leak you have, but, it, you know, it'll give you a point to start with for sure. So um, we're going to start with that fuel pump, I think. Cause I'm not seeing. <laughs> You're not seeing. <laughs> Get up there. I want to look at. I want to look at the injection pump in here too, to make sure we don't have any leaks down in here. So we put pressure to the tank we checked everything and the only place I found a leak was here and I wanted to be sure that we actually had flow from our pressure in our tank because you can see we listen we do have pressure in the tank so I cracked the fuel filter loose here just to make sure we had flow after I had um, checked everything for leaks and only found just this one spot I want to make sure that we did have flow and we do so that's why this is wet so don't think there's a leak here so the only place we found the leak was on the fuel pump and it is where the fuel pump comes together it's so hard to get a good good light in here so right here with the pinch is where it's leaking it's wet and i've put my finger on it wiped it and it smells like diesel fuel so right there where that pinch is, is where it separates from the mechanical lever on the top side, which runs off the cam. It moves a plunger up and down in here. And the bottom side, there's a rubber diaphragm in here that actually sucks the fuel on this side and pushes it through that side. So this pinch right here looks like it's leaking. And like I said, it smells like diesel fuel too. So that's enough to be an air leak to do what we're talking about i haven't found any leaks anywhere else everything else looks tight right now so before we chase our tail we're going to get that replaced and then we'll let it sit for a day or two and come back to it and test it and see what it does Well, we got the old one out and got it all cleaned up and uh, Napa didn't have it in stock so it had to be ordered in but they should have it in like an hour or two and we're gonna go pick it up you goofball this is a ground wire for like your cable box your telephone box I don't know why in the world he put that on but <laughs> Ain't hooked to nothing. Make sure that ain't got no holes in it. You would think if it did, 
Might be leaking because this is a pressure side. I don't see nothing. I don't think he wanted me to put the uh, new belt on it, but that's unfortunate. Well, it was all dry cracked. Yeah. Or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, it's going to gonna replace it now when it's convenient or you're gonna replace it later when it's inconvenient what is this I assume the bolts too long why would you have two washers not only that we all know this is how this goes like that man that is a thin washer yeah I'll be back I despise this kind of work. Absolutely despise it. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> Come on. The bolt didn't fit, so they just cut it open. Oh, Lord. That's why the bolt's all rounded off. What a load of crap. I get the other belt and see if it'll fit. It's supposed to be four tenths of an inch shorter. We'll see if that works out. what happens when nobody does anything right. Now, explain to me, how is that belt supposed to stay tight with that cut like that? I don't think that washer is going to make it. Don't complain too much. You're going to sound like that one guy, and you know who I'm talking about. I do know who you're <laughs> talking about. So I'm going to shut up. I don't want to sound like him. I know you're frustrated, but I'm just reminding you how ridiculous he is. Well, I wonder if I should go find a bigger washer for this. That sucks when your solution is a bigger washer. Ugh. Whatever. Yeah, let me see if I can find a bigger one. At least I had a bolt and a better washer and lock washer. Maybe it'll hold. I don't know. I don't want to go too tight. Too tight and you're just taking the life out of the bolt or out of the belt. <clears throat> okay, just care of that. Now I gotta tighten up the pivots. These are the easy trucks to work on. <clears throat> Nothing in the way. Being said, there's really no reason for things to be so cobbled up. So we're gonna put this together. There's my pry bar falling. We're gonna put this together and we're gonna put it outside and see how it starts in the morning. If it starts good, then I guess we'll be done. If it don't, well, I guess we'll do more. So what we're going to have to do now is prime the system to get it fired up because uh, we've lost some fuel through the pump. But I pinched off this hose here, so 
Um, it shouldn't take a, too awful much to prime the system. Let's see if it'll start. Wait to start. Waiting. Might crack a little bit. We lost a little bit of fuel. Well, shoot, that ain't bad at all. Huh. Okay. Well, we're going to check that uh, solenoid one more time. We're going to put the air cleaner back in and get it outside. And then we'll try it again in the morning. Place the batteries so and they're pretty low so I guess we'll just have to jump it when we go to start it tomorrow and see if it's running good well it's the next day let's see how this thing starts today the door it's like 20 something man look at that battery voltage drop wait start it's taking a while well it runs pretty smooth hmm wonder if it's fixed I guess the, uh, the real test will be in a couple days after it sits at his house because it'll sit here a couple days. It'll start fine every single day. He'll take it home, eh, not so much. Anyways, let's call this done for now. If that doesn't fix it, I'll bring you back. We'll look for something else, but if you don't see anything else, that means it fixed it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you on the next one.